Hi, um, it's been a few days now, a couple of weeks even, before, since I've done the, uh, the couple of videos on the Raspberry Pi Zero and the Raspberry Pi 3. And I did promise that I would do a little bit more on the Raspberry Pi 3, um, plugging it in and setting it up for the first time. And as I uh, say quite often with these videos, this video is not designed for those of you who are um, highly technical in, into the Raspberry Pi, but more uh, more directed towards people who may have been uh, maybe have just bought their first Raspberry Pi 3 and um, want to set it up. So um, that's what this video is all about. So it's going to be fairly basic, but I hope it's going to be interesting. So um, as, as, as I did in my previous video, I had the Raspberry Pi 3 um, box arrive, uh, which I unpacked, and you saw that previously. And uh, then recently, there's been a, a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, my my uh, Magpie edition um, is full of stuff on the Raspberry Pi 3. I'm not going to be dealing too much with that, but what I'd like to do is just share with you um, just some of the basics about the Raspberry Pi, uh, downloading the Noobs software for it, um, plugging it, it in, and uh, seeing how it reacts on first boot. Um, so let's get on with that. So here it is, the Raspberry Pi 3. I like to do my uh, ubiquitous uh, pen size check just to give you an idea of scale. So there's my standard ballpoint pen alongside the Raspberry Pi 3. Same dimensions uh, as the original Raspberry Pis, um, except uh, um, it has more hardware on it. And I covered most of that in my last video, but I will quickly um, recap uh, after this section of the video. Um, one thing you have to worry about, or not wor be concerned about, is the size of power supply. You're going to have to have one that gives at least 2,000 milliamps or 2,500 2, milliamps uh, in order to supply the needs of this uh, uh, quad-core processor and um, Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth plus the four um, USB outputs that could place extra demand on your chip. So make sure you have a sufficiently powerful um, mains adapter to supply that need. So let's have a quick look around the board. On the top we have the quad-core special, specially built processor, uh, 1.2 gigs. We have a USB chip uh, driving the USB uh, sockets. 40-pin populated general purpose input-output strip. Underneath the board, there is one gigabyte of memory linked to the CPU on the top of the board. There's also a wireless radio chip, which is very, very tiny. At the end of the board, we have an Ethernet socket, and we have the four USB sockets. Of course, also on the board, there's a power socket, a micro USB, an HDMI socket, um, a video output, a uh, composite video output, and a camera port as well. So, a very comprehensive layout. Now we come to the serious stuff. We need some software to run the thing. So it's always recommended that you format uh, an SD card and have a clean install. To do that um, we need to go onto your web browser. We need to select Raspberry Pi Downloads. Having done that you'll be presented with this page. So again you have a number of choices there. Select Downloads and then you'll see two boxes underneath that, one of them being Noobs, new out-of-the-box software. Select that one, and you have a choice of torrent or, or the, the normal uh, download. I, I just use the normal download here. So I click on that box, and the files will be downloaded to your download folder on your hard drive uh, of your main PC. So basically, that's how we get started. Once you have the files in your download folder, you need to find the uh, directory in which they're in um, and select the, the, the Noobs uh, 1.8, which is, happens to be this version. Um, you need to select them all. This is all going to take a little while um, to download and do all this stuff. But once they're there, you need to select the complete set of files. There they are there. So I'm going to go and uh, if I get my cursor working correctly, there they are, select them and then drag them over to the SD card uh, which is in your SD card reader. So I'm just going to drag those across now and wait for them to transfer. Um, here we go, just 
just going to wait for that to happen. And this is going to take a little while as well because there's a, a, a quite a lot of files, quite a lot of data to actually transfer. So I'll just bring in the uh, other box so that we can see uh, what's happening here. I'll drag that in, and as you can see, um, it's it's going to take a while. So I'm not going to uh, watch paint dry, and not going to bore you silly um, watching that. But you get the idea. There it is now, up to uh, um, well above 90% complete. Once that is complete, you'll see those files appear in your SD card, and there they are. So then all we have to do is safely remove that SD card and it's ready to slot into your Raspberry Pi. So the next stage is to see what happens then and get the Raspberry Pi up and running. So I've now applied power to the Raspberry Pi and in a few seconds we have some screens coming up. Um, I've done some stills on these because it's a bit of a laborious process to watch the whole thing. But this is an interesting one where it allows us to select our operating system, everything from Windows, Internet of Things, um, OSMC to do uh, um, multimedia if you wanted to. But we're going to select the default one which is the Raspbian install. So I've selected that and now I'm going to install that one. It tells you that uh, everything any OS on this thing will be wiped, but I'm going to agree to that, so let's say yes to that and start the install. Okay, it's now at 0%. It's obviously going to take about 15 minutes to do a full install and extract the files. We're now up to uh, 90% um, and uh, 100% and it says that the um, software has been installed successfully. So we're going to OK that and we get um, some uh, boot uh, scrolling going on and then very shortly we're into our home page uh, desktop of the uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, various options we have here, I'm not going to go through them all because uh, they're, they're mostly self-explanatory but um, you have a wide choice of things to do here. One thing I would say, if you're going to shut down, do it properly um, and uh, don't just pull the plug out. Uh, go through the shutdown procedure. Well, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, I hope it's been helpful to you. That was the whole purpose of the video, uh, so that if you're new to the Raspberry Pi, you can follow it through, um, download the software, install it, and get the Raspberry Pi 3 up and running. The rest of it is basically down to you. Um, it's uh, a wonderful machine, whether you're using it to teach the grandchildren uh, coding using Scratch, or whether you're going to do something more adventurous using Python uh, as a programming uh, tool. But um, there we are, Raspberry Pi 3, a very fast, a very wonderful machine. And uh, as I said, the rest is down to you. I'll be back um, soon with a different sort of video. But in the meantime, take care and enjoy.